What can you do to prevent your scoliosis from getting worse? One of the biggest concerns I hear from scoliosis patients is, can I stop my scoliosis from getting worse? And it tends to be a very big question to answer because that's what most patients are interested in. Is number one is stopping the worsening because most patients are noticing their curves worsen, either in the adolescent stage or the adult stage. They're seeing this worsening and they're trying to deal with, well, how do we stop it? We know scoliosis is a progressive condition, and it's progressive um, in two different stages. It's progressive in the adolescent stage because of growth, and it's progressive in the adult stage because of gravity over time. And in this progressive stage, in the adolescent stage, it can progress very, very quickly, very rapidly in a very short duration. Um, some cases can progress five, 10 degrees a month and during rapid growth spurts. In the adult stage, it's not rapidly progressing. It's a very slow and linear progression that snowballs as a patient gets older. So we have two key ages of progression. We have in the adolescent stage, and of course in late stage life, or later stage life, 60, 65 plus, we tend to see more faster progression. Doesn't mean it's not progressing in between those two time periods, it just tends to be slower. So the best way to prevent progression is to be very proactive. We know the number one factor or risk factor involved with progression, meaning how much your curve will progress, is always related to your size of curve. In the adolescent stage, the reason why categories of scoliosis are defined into three severities, meaning mild, moderate, or severe, it means really the it really means the, the severity or the risk of progression. Curves done less than 25 degrees are considered mild curvatures because they only have about a 30 degree, uh, 30 percent chance of progressing every single time a person grows. Once you break 25 degrees but less than 40, that number doubles. You're looking at 60 to 70 percent chance of progressing every single patient every time the patient grows or goes through a growth spurt. Once you break 40 degrees, it is almost 100 percent chance every single time the patient grows, the patient will progress. So when we look at mild, moderate, severe scoliosis, it's really telling you the, the mild or, or the risk of severity of progression during growth. In the adult stage, it's, uh, it's also related to size. We know larger curves will progress faster than smaller curves. 50-degree um, curves are estimated to progress about 2 degrees a year, where 20, 30-degree curves can progress about a half a degree a year. So we definitely know that the bigger the curve, the more it's going to progress, either in adolescent stage or adult. So if we know that to be true, wouldn't it make more sense that to keep the curve small? We know keeping curves small and keeping the curve size small can actually pr slow down and, and reduce the risk of how much your curve will progress. So reducing curve, curve reduction is the most proactive approach that you can take in preventing progression and stopping the curve. So if we know the size of scoliosis is what's the most biggest risk factor, the biggest factor associated with cur curve progression in adolescent or adult stage, and my question is, why are our traditional approaches so reactive? And this is what I mean. When it comes to traditional approaches, curves less than 25 degrees, when they're small and when you can have the greatest impact on how much a curve is going to progress over their life, the treatment option for tra traditional approaching at that point is nothing. They just watch it and see what happens. But while you're watching, you're losing very valuable time that you could be actually reducing the curve and actually preventing the progression from actually occurring. Once you break 25 degrees but less than 40, in this 15 degree window is where the only treatment that's offered outside of a surgical very invasive treatment, which is you know where they put rods and screws in your spine, and this is for a small group of people, meaning you have to be adolescent and going through a rapid growth phase, they would recommend something like a Boston brace. And this Boston brace is the goals are just trying to slow the progression down, not really trying to reduce it. And then, of course, once you break 40 degrees, that's when they recommend surgery. For the adult patient, that 15-degree window where they recommend Boston braces doesn't even exist. So for adult patients, it is like watch and wait until it's bad enough to do surgery. So if we know keeping a curve small is what stops you from a curve from progressing or reduces the risk of progressing to have this very invasive type of treatment like rods and screws and surgery, wouldn't we, wouldn't we want to be less reactive and much more proactive in dealing with curves smaller? The issue is in traditional treatment options, they have no good method in treating a small curve and keeping it small. 
the only, in reducing a curve, while it's small, really, the only real way they have of reducing a scoliosis is invasive surgery. And this invasive surgery has a risk associated and is relatively high. So therefore, since the, the treatment has high risk, they have to wait for the curve to worsen to justify the risk where we have methods and options in our conservative treatment model that doesn't carry the same risk, doesn't carry the same types of invasiveness into your body, it could affect you in a negative way. So therefore, we can treat curves much smaller. I don't recommend waiting to 25 degrees to treat a scoliosis. We treat curves definitely 15 degrees, um, sometimes less if there's a history associated with the person, that meaning that they have other patients that, or their family members that have progressive or high or severe scoliosis cases. So we treat curves in a much smaller stage and the goal here is to address the structure and reduce the size of curve no matter what level you are whether it's mild moderate or severe because if we can reduce the size of curve that's going to have the greatest impact on the risk and the rate of your curve progression whether you're an adolescent or adult and we do this in a very conservative way in doing therapy rehabilitation chiropractic care exercises that are designed specifically for your scoliosis and the goal is better spinal alignment and better and scoliosis reduction so gravity will have a less effect on your scoliosis over time and growth will have a less effect on your scoliosis during rapid growth progression both options are viable to reduce your curve we know scoliosis is incurable you're not permanently correcting your scoliosis, you're not eliminating it, you're not re reducing it to zero, but it's definitely treatable. And you can definitely be proactive in actually reducing how much the curve progresses. But the key thing here is being very proactive. The more proactive you are with conservative treatment, the more effective it will be in actually affecting how much your curve progresses over time as opposed to just letting the curve continue to worsen over time and leading you down towards a road that's very invasive towards surgery. If you really think about it, surgery should be the last resort treatment. It shouldn't be like you're just waiting for your curve to get bad enough and now, okay, you're going to need surgery. The idea is it should be when conservative treatment fails and you have no other options, then you should, when you should consider surgery. So here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we're recommending that you get evaluated as soon as possible so you can be more proactive and slowing down your curve progression so surgery is never an option for you, never becomes an option. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.